the epoxy that we have been using most commonly here at the museum is called Bueller. And it's called Bueller Epoxycure Resin. Uh, there's another resin called Epotech 301 that we're now beginning to also use. Uh, but for our purposes today, we'll use our standard Bueller product. And it comes, as all epoxies do, in two parts. The first of which is the actual liquid resin. And the ratio for this resin, in order to mix it properly, is four to one. Four parts of the, of the actual resin to one part hardener. And so I'm going to put in, since we don't have that many pieces to embed right now, I'm going to put in about 28, I'm going to fill this to the 28th mark on this cylinder, this graduated cylinder. And the other one I'll fill to seven. And so now I'm doing it very carefully because I don't want to create bubbles. And the less bubbles that are created, I'm about halfway, uh, the less bubbles you create, especially when mixing the two parts together, I'm almost there. I'm at uh, 23, I want to get to 28, so a little bit more. And let's see where we are. We're a little over, but I can fix that. Um, so, it's uh, about 30 right now. And I'm going to put this back. dripping down the side of it, and take the hardener out next, here, and I'm going to put in about seven, fill the same type of graduated cylinder for the hardener. They're marked, because you don't want to ever mix these up, and, uh, so this one, which we use for the hardener each time, Fill up to hopefully about seven. And right now it's at about six. We're very close. It's not going to take much at all to get that where we want it. A little more than that, maybe. But not, that's about it. I'm going to let that reach, reach the rest of it. I think we're at seven. So that actually came out well. It may go up a little bit because there's still some liquid on the side of the cylinder, but that can be adjusted. And I'll put the other these two containers back and, and then take a look and make sure we have the right amounts for our mixture. And in this case, we have a little more than we need here, so I'm going to pour off the excess. Make this about where it should be, and it just about is. Just about is at 28 now, okay? Near meniscus, which is now leveling off at the right level there. This is about right. So, okay, these are good. And I'm going to be pouring these two parts into a cup together. It's a typical waxed coffee cup. Works very well. And uh, first, first this goes in, uh, the resin, which is most of it. Uh, and when mixing these two parts together, once they're both in this cup, uh, it's very important to use very thorough mixing uh, with the wand that, we'll, that I'll be using to mix it, but, but also not to do it in a jerky or erratic motion because then it Bubbles, especially if it goes up and down. I try to keep it at a certain level. This this side now emptied in, and this one will follow. It goes a little faster. I already am starting to rotate the cup in my hand to make sure that the hardener's getting as much chance to kind of contact as much of the resin as possible. And it's down just dripping a little bit, but and when the drips slow down to a certain point then uh, I'll stop that. And it's about there. But I want to make sure it hardens. So make sure there's no hardener. 
You don't want to put too much harder in because then you get an exothermic reaction. And if you use too much of this mixture at a time, you can also get an exothermic reaction. So it's important to keep aware of that when doing the mixing. All right, now I've gotten to the point where I can actually mix these. And I have a dowel here, a glass uh, stirring rod, actually. And I'm going to now start to stir the resin. And if you notice, at first, it's a little cloudy and swirly looking. And it'll be like that at the beginning, uh, until the components start to actually mix together better. And now I switched my direction. So I'm creating swirls in uh, the opposite direction. I went first counterclockwise, now I'm going clockwise. And now I'm going counterclockwise again. And now I'm going back and forth. I just want to make sure it's mixed. We have had experience years ago uh, in which unmixed, un inadequately mixed resin uh, caused the, um, the epoxy to set poorly and incompletely, and then we had to remove it and re-embed the pieces, and it was very difficult to remove. So it's important to mix it properly. I can't stress that enough. You also don't want to create bubbles, so I'm trying to be very even-handed as I stir this in order to prevent that. And it's getting clear. It's beginning to look like it's mixing enough. Uh, I tend to be a perfectionist, and I don't want to not have mixed it enough. So I'm going to continue mixing a little bit, even though it looks pretty mixed. And just make sure it is. All right. I think it's pretty good. Now, to make sure that any bubbles that were created uh, while mixing are brought to the surface of this, I then take it over here to this device, which is a vibrating tumbler, and I turn it on, and uh, the cup sits on that, and then I hold it like this, and uh, there we are, and turn it off. And what that does is any bubbles, and there aren't really any that I can see here, but any bubbles that were there, usually small ones, rise to the surface and they're usually in the center of the cup. And then you can take a spoon and just skim them off. But in this case, it looks like we don't really have any bubbles to worry about. So what I'm going to do now is pour this mixture into each of the cups that I prepared earlier. And here we are uh, in one of the non-reusable cups, these little orange ones. Also, by the way, can be obtained from Bueller. You want to be, you want the level of the mixture to be higher than the piece of amber by a little bit, just so that you don't get bubbles uh, adhering to the top of the amber. And also because you want it completely to be submerged. And here I am doing it again. I'm being very careful as I go around here to make sure that I allow bubbles that are trapped not to be permanently trapped, but to be able to move up. And now I'm pouring a little extra in there to make sure it's high enough. And now we'll start with this last piece and do the same thing. I'm giving it a chance to, to find its way around the piece before I cover the piece so that any trapped bubbles can have the opportunity to move upward. All right, and then finally, I'm now, and now I've now completed the three. So, what we have here then is the epoxy completely covering each of the three pieces of amber on all but the bottom sides, and the bottom sides being far from the inclusions. And the next thing to do uh, at this stage is to actually put these under vacuum for several minutes in order to allow this resin to impregnate cracks, pores, uh, and other weak areas in the amber 
uh, and displace any air that's trapped in the, inside the amber. So we'll now bring these over to the this device here, which is the actual embedding device, the vacuum pump here, and a bell jar. We have some uh, vents or valves, which I close, in order to not allow air to escape during the vacuum embedding. And they're pretty tight now. I'm going to take this bell jar off, and what I'm going to do is create a seal so that when we put these pieces in here and cover them with the bell jar, a, uh, there will be no air entering the uh, chamber. So, so I take some petroleum jelly, and this is very low tech, put on your finger, and you don't want to put too much of it on, but you kind of, kind of dab it first in a few spots, and then kind of spread it around so that it fairly evenly covers this rim. And once the rim is covered all the way around, and it has to be, you don't want any of these areas to be missed because then uh, it can allow air in. You can usually tell how good the seal is by trying to move it once it is engaged, once the vacuum is engaged. All right, so now we're ready to put the pieces in. Now, I'm not going to put too many in at once. We only have three today. And I'm going to arrange them in such a way that I can remove the bell jar safely afterwards. And I'll explain that in a minute. All right, here are the three cups. The bell jar now will be placed over them. And the air will, will, be, will escape or be sucked out through the hole in the center of this, of this table here. And I think we have a pretty good seal, it looks like. Uh, and I will not speak for the next couple of minutes because this is going to be very loud. The, before I start it, I shall mention that as this pump removes air from beneath the bell jar and actually allows the air to be replaced by the liquid epoxy, in the surface and hopefully in deeper places if, if possible in the amber. While this is going on and I turn this on, it will start to become increasingly louder as the process is carried forward for several minutes until it becomes very high pitched and you know that this machine is laboring a lot to remove air and you know that you're getting to a point where a reasonably good vacuum has been created. So I'm going to turn it on now.